Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be my skincare routine. I've had a lot of requests to do my skincare routine for you guys because as you guys know, I do suffer with acne and scars and all that stuff. So I kind of wanted to break down each product that I use and really stuff that's been helping me tremendously throughout the past couple of months with my skin. So basically I just wanted to go through my skincare journey with you guys and pretty much go step by step by step of everything that I do in my skincare regimen and that is why I'm wearing makeup in this video because believe me I would not be wearing makeup in a skincare video if it wasn't for me doing a demo for you guys because I wanted to show you guys basically how I remove my makeup, how I cleanse, how I moisturize, how I do my treatment, all that stuff so that you guys can see firsthand on how I go about my skincare routine because I feel like just talking about it isn't really that helpful. I feel like if I'm watching someone actually do it, then I can kind of catch on to things. Um, so yeah, that's why I'm wearing makeup today. But to start off with this whole skincare video, I kind of want to go back in time and kind of show you guys or explain to you guys what I've learned throughout the years and everything because I did go to school for skincare and facials and all that stuff. So I am a certified esthetician and so is my mom. So my mom always taught me to wash my face before I go to sleep, not to sleep with my makeup on, to moisturize my skin, to make sure that I wear sunscreen to protect my skin, like all the stuff that you really don't really want to do when you're a teenager because you got other things to do. Um, my mom taught me how to do all that. So once I graduated high school, I decided to go to cosmetology school and I went to the Aveda Institute of Las Vegas. It is hair and skin care, so I was uh, obviously an SD. So when picking out your skin care, you always want to make sure that you are using products that are specifically for your skin type. So say you have oily skin, dry skin, sensitive skin, or a combination skin, you always want to make sure that you are using products that are targeted for your skin type. So if you do have dry skin, you don't want to be using something that is for oily skin. And same thing with oily skin, you don't want to be using something that's targeted for dry skin, if that makes sense. <laughs> so, um, me personally, I do have combination to oily skin, which means that I kind of get oily in my T-zone and then on my cheeks and that kind of stuff is kind of just normal. Or sometimes it can get dry with different products that I've been using. And with the seasons changing, my skin can kind of get a little bit more dry in the winter time and then it can get a little bit more oily during the summertime. So, these are the products that I've been using that have really been helping me and I want to share these products with you guys so that hopefully you guys, if you do suffer with the same kind of skin that I have, you can go out and try these products for yourself. So to break down my skincare routine in a simpler way, I use the Josie Marin... Um, Argan Oil Cleansing Cleanser. So this is just basically like an oil. Um, I got the like little mini version because I got it in like a kit I think or something like that. But this is just a cleansing oil. You apply it all over your face on makeup and stuff. So I would just directly go in with this oil and put it all over my face. Just move it around. It breaks down mascara, eyeliner, foundation, all that stuff. Then I would rinse my skin. And then I will go in with my Purity One Step Facial Cleanser and I will remove the rest of the makeup and everything like that because the oil is really going to break down all the mascara, eyeshadow, foundation, all that stuff. And then once you remove that, um, basically all the makeup is going to be gone and then you're really just going to be cleansing your skin and your pores and everything like that. I highly recommend this uh, cleanser because it is one step which means it's going to remove your makeup if you don't want to use the oil or if you don't want to use a makeup wipe because sometimes you can get a little lazy um, and it's also going to tone your skin which means it's going to restore your pH balance um, and all that stuff like that and not kind of like dry your skin out so um, after I do that I will go in with my treatment and my treatment is the Acne.org treatment, which is benzoyl peroxide. This is the 2.5%. Basically, what benzoyl peroxide is, is in simpler terms, it's basically a um, topical medication. So a lot of like dermatologists, estheticians, all that stuff, they do recommend benzoyl peroxide for acne-prone skin because it's really going to um, dry out your skin and pretty much dry out all the acne causing bacteria that might be on your skin and kind of kill it so that you don't get any more acne. 
Now this is kind of for mild to moderate acne, so I'm not saying like if you have like cystic acne, maybe this might not work for you, but you can give it a try. I mean, I'm all up for trying new things and stuff like that. Um, but this honestly really did help my acne. Basically, I use this every single day, twice a day. I don't skip a day. <laughs> you want to make sure that you're washing your face every single morning and every single night. So for morning and night, I still use the Purity One Step Facial Cleanser. Um, so I'll just wash my face, then apply my treatment once my pores are still open. You don't want to wait until your pores are closed and then apply the treatment because that's really not going to do anything and you want your pores to be open for the medication to, to kind of like work. And when you first start out with benzoyl peroxide, on acne.org it gives you a step-by-step -step kind of guide on what you're supposed to do. And if you follow that list, they claim that you'll have clear skin within like six months to a year, and I completely agree. If you guys go back on my videos probably maybe eight months ago, you will see that I did have really bad acne on my cheeks, and it was kind of starting down my neck a little bit. This is what changed my skin and completely cleaned and cured all that acne. So I highly recommend this product if you guys do suffer with acne. Um, also, when you start out with acne or .org or benzyl peroxide, you do want to use a hefty amount of benzyl peroxide because it's not really going to do anything if you're only going to use like a pea size amount. So they do give you a generous amount of benzyl peroxide because you are going to be using a lot of it. So this is the 8 ounce um, bottle and basically I just squirt out like a finger size amount. You guys will see in the demo pretty much what I do. Um, and then I just take that and apply a generous amount all over my skin. You really want to just make sure that you are just kind of like flowing. <laughs> you don't want to be like rubbing too hard or anything like that because any kind of harsh um, kind of rubbing or tugging at your skin is just going to irritate your skin even more. So just make sure you're just very softly just rubbing the cream all over. Then you just want to leave your skin alone. Make sure that your hands are clean, that's the number one thing, because your hands do harbor a lot of bacteria, you're touching things, all that stuff like that. So if you're going to apply a cream or, you know, wash your face or all that stuff, you want to make sure that your hands are clean and washed before you do anything to your face. Otherwise, it's just going to cause more bacteria and acne, and you don't want that. So, a generous amount of benzoyl peroxide. Apply that generously all over my face, let it seep into my pores. Then once this has completely dried on my skin, I will go in with either a moisturizer or I will go in with um, glycolic acid. So my moisturizer is again from acne.org and it's just your basic moisturizer. That's as easy as it is. It won't clog your pores. It is for acne skin, sensitive skin. Anyone can use this cle um, cleanser, sorry, moisturizer. It hydrates your skin. Um, because when you are using the benzoyl peroxide, your skin is going to be really, really, really dry. And I just want to make sure that you guys know that if you do use benzoyl peroxide, your skin will be extremely dry, flaky, kind of irritated at first. But just keep going, keep pushing through because you always want to make sure that you test out a product at least 12 weeks to 6 months. And if you don't see a difference within that time period, then just toss it. It's obviously not working out because when you do have acne, it is a process. You want to kind of make sure that you are keeping up with it. Don't skip a day and just work with it. Give it at least a month to two months to try and get used to it, get your skin used to it. And then you can kind of judge if it's working or if it's not working. I will use the moisturizer and if I feel like my skin is like really, really, really dry, then I will go in with an oil and I will mix in the oil with the moisturizer. I highly recommend the Pura Dior Rose Hip Seed Oil because this does renew skin cells. It helps with scarring and um, let's see, it repairs acne blemishes as well. So this is a great kind of oil to mix in with the moisturizer and it's just really going to help kind of soothe your skin and it'll make it feel a lot better because trust me it's going to be so dry that you're going to be like, oh my god, I just want some oil in my skin. And I know a lot of oily people out there do not want to put oil on their skin, but honestly, I always recommend this and I did when I was in school as well that oil combats oil so say you're producing way too much oil introducing an oil into your skincare routine will really help your skin kind of balance out and not produce as much oil so if you are experiencing a lot of oil production in your skin then just try introducing an oil you can do it at night or in the morning whatever you prefer um, and just see if it kind of helps balance out your skin because usually 
with oily people, your skin is just trying to produce as much oil as it, as it needs to because it feels like it's not getting enough oil. So if you do um, apply an oil, then it's really not going to produce that much oil, if that makes sense. So I would recommend the rose hip oil. This is really good oil. Or you can use good old tea tree oil. This is a cult favorite. Everybody uses tea tree oil for acne. It's a fungus fighter. It's really good. It's like an antibiotic. It's um, really going to help kind of soothe the acne and kill it even more. If you use tea tree oil in with your moisturizer, it's not going to break you out anymore because it is tea tree oil and it's really going to help kind of calm the skin a little bit better. So if you feel like the moisturizer isn't doing you justice and you feel like it's just you're still way too dry, try using an oil with it and just mix it in together and that should work great for you. Also, doc, uh, doc. <laughs> Also, Acne.org does recommend using jojoba oil. Um, they do sell like a big huge thing on their website as well. If you want to go ahead and get your kit with the oil, you can do it that way. Um, but I just use these two or you can get jojoba oil at like Walmart or something like that. So next um, is this product that I introduced I think um, two months to three months into my regimen. So once the benzoyl peroxide kind of got used to my skin and I wasn't, you know, as irritated with it and my skin wasn't as dry, I introduced AHA, which is glycolic acid. It is the 10% and this one is by acne.org as well. They do recommend on their website to not start using this until like a month into using the entire regimen because this is a chemical exfoliant. Now, when you have acne, the number one thing I cannot stress enough is that you do not want to be using any harsh exfoliants on your skin because say like the St. Ives apricot scrub, I think it's called, or like anything that's kind of like got the little beads. If you have acne prone skin and sensitive skin, you don't want to be using that on your skin because it's really just going to irritate the acne even more. It's not really going to help kind of, you know, simmer down the acne because it's going to be, you know, frustrated and a little irritated. So, and it's just going to cause more acne in the long run. Also, um, the spin brushes, like the, um, what are they called? What's it called? Oh, I forgot. Vanity Planet has like a spin brush. Um, any of those things you don't want to be using if you do have acne because that's really just going to irritate your skin even more. Also, those little brush heads collect a lot, a lot of bacteria. And when you're using it every single day, it's just going to harbor more bacteria and you're just going to be scrubbing the bacteria back into your skin. So I wouldn't recommend using anything too abrasive, too harsh on your skin. Any of those spin brushes, I would kind of just stop using it for a while just to see how your skin kind of reacts to it. And if it's better, then move on from there. But I personally do not recommend spin brushes or anything like that. I recommend chemical exfoliants and that is the best thing honestly for acne skin because a chemical exfoliant is basically a cream. It's AHA which is glycolic acid and it's going to um, pretty much exfoliate your skin but in a more calm way and it's really going to help with the scarring of your acne because once you use benzoyl peroxide that's really going to help clean out the acne and clear it and kind of stop it from stop you from producing more pimples and then um, obviously with having those pimples before you're going to be left over with some scarage, some hyperpigmentation, that kind of stuff and for a more kind of flawless kind of even complexion you want to go in with something that is more of a chemical exfoliant because that's really going to help reduce the look of scars, hyperpigmentation, wrinkles, all that good stuff. But I cannot recommend this product enough if you have acne prone skin or scarring or anything like that. This is honestly what has helped diminish the look of my scars and all that stuff like that. I can't, oh, I just love this product so much. I can't, I can't recommend it enough. Um, so say if I am using the moisturizer, every other day or every two days, instead of the moisturizer, I will use the AHA. And I will use the AHA exactly how I would use a moisturizer. So basically just pump like a pump, a pump and a half, just to lather all over your skin and just let that sink in. And you will notice that when you apply AHA, if you kind of like rub your skin a little bit, it will kind of ball up a little bit. And that's kind of like the dead skin kind of balling up with the um, glycolic acid. So um, just leave your skin alone. Another thing you don't want to do is touch your skin. Don't touch your skin throughout the day if you're one of those people that just don't want to be doing that. 
that is pretty much all the stuff that I use to help with clear skin and to help get my skin kind of back to normal. Um, also, the number one thing I cannot stress enough, no matter what skin tone you have, you always want to make sure that you are applying sunscreen to your skin. Sunscreen is the best thing, honestly, especially during the summertime and the summer months. Even during the winter, you want to make sure that you are applying sunscreen during the day because 90% of wrinkles are caused from sun damage. And, you know, say you have like sunspots and stuff like that, the more you're out in the sun, the darker those sunspots are going to get and the darker they get, the kind of harder they are to kind of make them go away. So, just make sure that you are using sunscreen. I would recommend the Avini, I don't know how to say this, it's kind of like in French or something, but it's SPF 50 and it's specifically made for your face because I noticed that sometimes um, sunblocks that are for your body, they can kind of clog your pores on your skin. So try to make sure you are using a sunscreen that is made for your face because it won't really clog your pores and stuff like that. So. I always apply this um, in the morning. Sometimes I'll skip on the moisturizer if I know I'm going to be in the sun and I will just apply the sunscreen as a moisturizer and I will go ahead and do my makeup and all that stuff. Um, some other tips that I have if you guys are suffering from acne and stuff like that, just stuff that I've learned along the way in school from my mom, you know, I just want to pass this on to you guys because it helps me a lot. So with moisturizers and oils and stuff like that, when I do apply those, I make sure I bring it down my neck and kind of like on my decollete area because you don't want to just make sure that your skin on your face looks good. You want to make sure your neck looks good and your chest looks good and stuff because that's really going to help with anti-aging and protecting your skin in the long run. So make sure that when you are applying like your moisturizers and your oils and all that good stuff that you are bringing it down your neck and in this region as well because if you notice during like facials and stuff like that they'll bring it like up here and on your neck and stuff like that so just kind of replicate that at home during your whole little regimen and that will help you in the long run as well another tip that I have is to make sure that you clean your makeup brushes you always want to make sure that you are cleaning your makeup brushes and your makeup sponges um, those harbor a lot of bacteria um, because you know you're using makeup over and over again and when you are applying makeup to your skin, your skin's already kind of acne prone and if you're using the same makeup and the same brushes that have collected all that bacteria, you're basically just applying more bacteria to your skin and that's just not good. So you want to make sure that you are cleaning like your face brushes, I would say like once every week or once every two weeks. Eye brushes like once every two or three weeks I would say. Um, but face brushes majorly need to be washed as well as sponges. Also, if you've had a sponge longer than a month, you want to toss that sponge because even if you wash it, it's still harboring more bacteria in there. Um, so just kind of replace the sponge. If you use like real technique sponges, just repurchase them um, like every month or so. I don't use like the beauty blender because that's that's way too much for me. <laughs> 20 bucks for a sponge, I'll pass. But the real te techniques ones is really good and I would toss those like every month and get a new one so that it's not harboring bacteria. Another thing is to change your pillowcases when you're sleeping because even though you're sleeping, you're laying down, you're sweating during the night, you're kind of, your skin is open, your skin's going through some stuff while you're sleeping. Um, so just make sure that you are cleaning your pillowcases and changing them throughout the week as well as your sheets and stuff like that because no one wants to sleep on dirty sheets and dirty pillowcases. Um, also, if you are a self-tanner, self-tanning because I am a self-tanner, um, I noticed that self-tanning can like seep into my sheets and on my pillowcases, so you always want to make sure that once you're done self-tanning, you want to make sure that you do change those sheets because all that stuff can get stuck in your pores and stuff like that, and then you'll end up waking up with a pimple and not have any idea why. And it could be as simple as just changing your pillowcases every week. Another tip that I have is to make sure that you don't kind of call it quits so fast. So say like you tried something for a week and you're still not seeing results. Give it at least, you know, a month or so to kind of justify if you want to keep using it or not. Because your skin really needs to kind of get used to the product and you're really not going to see a difference you know, in a couple days. So you just gotta give it a little time to kind of adjust. If you're not seeing any results by a month, two months, then I would say, you know, maybe try something else, but 
don't be so fast to like call it quits and just stop using it because you feel like it's not working and you're not seeing results as fast as you want to because it is a process and trust me the longer you use something the more more likely you are to see results in that way because I remember when I started using benzoyl peroxide I was like my skin is so freaking dry I don't even want to use this anymore I'm scared that it's just gonna irritate my skin even more because I did experience like some blotchiness around my neck because it was kind of irritating my skin in some ways but the more that you use it the more that your skin kind of gets acclimated to it and gets used to it so I wouldn't be so quick to call it quits and just try it out if you're not seeing results within a month or two maybe try something else but just give it time and I hope you will see results. Another tip that I have is to make sure that you are cleaning your phone screen because as simple as that may seem and kind of just weird, but your phone does harbor a lot of bacteria. You're laying it down, you're putting it on its on its like face and stuff like this, on surfaces that have bacteria. Then you're going and you're putting it on your face and you don't know why you're breaking out in this area because your phone is dirty. So make sure that you are like wiping it down with like alcohol wipes or something like that to clean the surface of your phone because it could be dirty and you're getting like makeup and all that stuff and sweat and oil on your phone screen and you don't know why you're breaking out. So I would try wiping your phone screen and keeping that clean. I've heard a lot of people like have stopped eating dairy and that really does help their skin. Personally I haven't stopped using dairy but I don't drink milk because I am lactose intolerant. <laughs> so I have, um, what's it called? What kind of milk is it called? I use lactate milk, so I don't have any dairy in my milk, I don't think. Um, because every time I have dairy, for some reason, it makes my stomach hurt. Um, I think I'm going to start like not eating that much meat and all that stuff. I don't know, because I love me some meat, but I don't know. We'll see. Um, but every time I eat like steak and stuff like that, my stomach always ends up hurting. So... Maybe I'm going to try and kind of eliminate some dairy in my diet, and that might help. Another tip that I have is to make sure that you are drinking water, because water, you need water in your body, obviously, and it's really good for you. I am guilty of this. I don't drink water, like, nearly as much as I should, honestly. Um, I love my Coca-Cola. I love my coffee. <laughs> water is literally, like, the last thing I will ever order, like, even at a restaurant. So let's make a pack that we will start drinking more water because it's honestly really good for your skin and it's really going to help your skin and your body all together. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much my skincare routine. Um, I also do masks, you know, throughout the week sometimes. Um, but then again, like I don't want to irritate my skin anymore with applying masks like every single day because that can really irritate your skin. So some of the masks that I really do love is the Aztec um, clear Aztec clay healing mask. It's like a big mask like this you can get on Amazon or like iHerb.com. I get mine at a vitamin shop here in Vegas. Um, but it's basically just like a clay powder and you mix it with apple cider vinegar which is also really great for your skin and it's really going to help with pulling the impurities out. Really help kind of cleanse your skin and like um, get rid of all the bad toxins and stuff like that is in your pores. And honestly, when you apply this mask, it is not like a, like, let's go relax, put some cucumbers on my eyes and chill because it's painful. It hurts. You really can feel your skin kind of like pulsating when you're wearing the mask. And it's painful. When you remove it, your skin's red. It's irritated. But it honestly is the best feeling in the world when you remove this mask. Your skin feels so soft. And it really does help bring any acne or any pimples that are kind of underneath the surface to the surface so that it's easier for you to kind of clean them and clear them and all that stuff. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Also, another tip that I have with masks is um, you always want to make sure that you are applying your mask after you cleanse your skin. So before you apply moisturizer, before you apply your treatment, um, eye cream, all that stuff, you want to make sure that you apply the mask because your pores will be open and when you apply the mask your pores will be accepting the mask and helping with the treatment that the mask provides. So after you're done with the mask you'll apply your treatment, your toner, your moisturizer, all the stuff that you have in your routine and stuff like that. So yeah, that's pretty much all my skincare routine is. It's It seems complex because I've been talking about it for like ever but it's pretty much just a cleanser, 
a treatment, a moisturizer, and a chemical exfoliant. And that's pretty much all I use. And this has pretty much been what I've been using for the past like nine months or so. And I honestly cannot, cannot think of anything else that would change my skin more than these products have. I recommend them to everybody that has acne and honestly they have changed my skin, they have changed the texture, they have changed the appearance of my pores, of my acne scarring and I just really really enjoy this skincare. So if I can help you guys in any way I would love to pass on my knowledge to you guys. I can talk about skincare for literally hours. I went to school for all this stuff so it just intrigues me so much to learn about skin and like all that stuff. So. Sorry if this is a long video, but I feel like I have a lot of stuff to talk about in a short amount of time, but I hope you guys are still with me. So I will include the demo on how I use each and individual product so that you guys can really see how I use it and how I cleanse my skin and everything, and then I will show you my skin up close and personal on like what it looks like and the scarring and everything so that you can see how much my skin has changed and all that stuff. But. So that completes this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed and learned some tips and tricks on pretty much what I use to help keep my skin clear and what has worked for me and help me with my acne and all that stuff. I'm sorry if this video was super long, but I have a lot of stuff to talk about. Skincare is like one of my major passions. I went to school for it, so I kind of want to share my knowledge with my subscribers and hopefully this will help you guys trying to check out new products and help with acne and all that stuff like that. So yeah, if you guys happen to check out any of these products, let me know down below if they work for you and all that stuff. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and click the little bell that's down there next to the subscribe button. It will notify you every time that I upload a video. And yeah, I love you guys and I will see you in my next video. Bye!